For centuries, mankind has sought to harness the awesome power of the sun, and recent developments in technology have made this more and more of a reality. It might surprise you to find out that Ireland is actually contributing greatly to the global solar energy sector. And I'm here today to speak with solar expert, Professor Peter Gallagher, to find out more about this incredible energy resource. The sun is just one of the most amazing objects in the universe. If it wasn't for the sun, we wouldn't have life. It provides our light and that gets the trees and the plants and the grass to grow, but it also gives us heat as well. It's absolutely intricate to the reason why we have life on this planet. So we're here at Burr Castle and we have the Leviathan telescope behind us and you're about to build another telescope here on the grounds. Yeah, well, the Leviathan is, was my inspiration. I mean, why else would you come to Burr? It's kind of the heartland of Irish astronomy. In fact, it's probably the heartland of global astronomy. This was a telescope that was here from the 1840s right up until the 1920s that was the biggest telescope in the world. Irish people had the biggest telescope in the world. This beautiful old telescope was used to study the night sky. But Peter recently oversaw the installation of a new radio telescope called LOFAR that allows scientists to monitor weather conditions on the sun and help forecast its effects here on Earth. The sun emits X-rays, ultraviolet, normal light, infrared light, microwave light and radio waves. And with the radio telescope, the thing is that you see the most active part of the solar atmosphere. You can see the whole atmosphere bubbling away and producing these uh, flares that I'm so fascinated by. While projects such as LOFAR are observing the sun, there's increasing interest in technologies that can harness the incredible energy emitted by our stellar neighbour. The sun is producing at the top of our atmosphere about 1.3 kilowatts in every square metre. So if you look at the ground below us, that's one square metre. But the atmosphere then reflects about a third of that, then the atmosphere absorbs another third of it. By the time it gets down to the ground, we're only seeing a couple of hundred watts per metre squared. That's like you know, a light bulb shining on every square metre. That's a lot of energy. And so what we need to do is develop detectors that can pick up that energy and convert it into electricity in an efficient manner. And that's what companies are now trying to do, to take that light, to take that hundred watts in every square metre and turn it into a hundred watts of energy. One and a half hours of sunlight on the Earth's surface is sufficient to meet the global energy requirements for a whole year. So how in Ireland can we reap the benefits of this incredible renewable resource? I'm here on the first solar energy farm on the island of Ireland to meet sustainable energy expert Brian Denver. Brian, when I think of solar technology, I think of fancy rooftops in California, I think of panels out on the desert, and not necessarily a field in Ireland. Is it something that we can do in this country? Absolutely, yes. I mean, it's not the sunniest day today. We've got a bit of cloud cover but these solar panels will still be producing electricity because while they produce best when they're in direct sunlight, they still work when there's any kind of light. The technology that we have here is called solar PV, which is basically solar panels that produce electricity directly from sunlight. And that's the fastest growing electricity generating technology in the world in the last five years. So could it be something that we see more solar farms like this one placed beside a wind farm that we actually see in the distance here? Definitely, and that's a really good use of space. And as the costs of solar technology come down increasingly, we are gonna see that more and more. So for instance, if you've got a factory where you have a, a high demand for electricity during the day, solar panels can really work. And the example we have here, this is feeding directly into the airport in Belfast. So it does make sense in certain applications already. And increasingly, it'll become something that makes sense for homeowners to install. The solar market today is worth over $160 billion. And there are lots of Irish researchers and businesses who are already tapping into that. Some areas like material science, where Irish research is really at the forefront, developing new exotic materials, producing electricity, but also improving the materials we have. Solar P 
PV cells are made of wafers of semiconducting materials such as silicon. The greater the surface area of these silicon wafers, the more sunlight is trapped and therefore the more electricity can be produced. Recent innovations to increase the surface area used a heated blowtorch-like device and plasma to etch into the wafers. But the process is expensive and complex, and an Irish company has come up with a revolutionary new technique which could radically improve the industry. Ed Duffy is CEO of Nines PV, based in Tala. Wafers are put into very large vacuum chambers, and complex plasmas are, are ignited, and that plasma does the texturing. And what we've done is we've simplified it and we've taken it back to a point where we don't need vacuum chambers and we don't need the plasma. We have invented a whole new method here and we've called it ADE, so atmospheric dry etching. The wafers are being loaded into the reactor in line as they move through and they, they move into this reaction section here and this is where all the magic happens, this is where, this is where the texturing happens. We brought it back to simplicities. We use a fluorine gas to do the etching where you don't need the high energy plasma to activate the fluorine. That's the novelty in our invention. You don't need vacuum and you can do it in an open reactor like we've, we have. The machine that we have here is a pilot scale machine. This particular system can run up to maybe a thousand wafers per hour. And then the, the next systems, the production systems we're looking at developing now this year and through next year would be multiple reactors, multiple lanes. They can do maybe four lanes, 4,000 wafers an hour, or six lanes, 6,000 wafers an hour. With the right automation and the right onload automation, you can just run this 24 seven. Nines PV sold their first prototype machine to the world-renowned Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems in Germany, and they're collaborating with researchers there to evaluate and develop the technology for the mass market. The exciting thing is that we've only scratched the surface of what this technology can do. With innovation, it's always improving, and there's still a long way to go.